This is the sound of Taekwondo, the national sport of Korea. As the world's most practiced martial art, Taekwondo has become one of Korea's greatest cultural exports. Grandmaster Jae Hoon Kim is founder of the J.H. Kim Taekwondo Institute in Boston, and he's been teaching the martial art since 1974. In 1974, founder of modern Taekwondo came to Boston, and uh, he felt that if I could build a good school here in Boston where, in his words, elites of the world comes and, you know, they study and then they go back to their countries. Uh, he thought it could really help him uh, promote Taekwondo around the world. One, two, that's it. Taekwondo became an official Olympic sport in 1988 and is practiced by nearly 60 million people all over the world. Grandmaster Kim explains the basics of the sport, known for its sophisticated kicking techniques. Literally, it means the art of using your hands and feet, uh, hands and feet symbolizing the whole body. Uh, it was studied in 1955. Of course, roots of the techniques go back many centuries, but the modern system of Taekwondo actually started in 1955, and uh, it, it became uh, the most practiced martial art in the world. If you look at, for, uh, for instance, the tenets of Taekwondo, values uh, that we abide by, you know, courtesy, integrity, perseverance, self-control, and indomitable spirit, and understanding of those values and trying to incorporate those values into your daily life is part of what, what you do when you practice Taekwondo. The sound mind in sound body mentality has attracted more participants in recent years. I think people in the old days, you know, used to come to Taekwondo school to really get into martial art aspect of Taekwondo, but nowadays, of course, people come mainly for fitness. That has resulted in big business for the Kim Institute, which has 11 schools in three countries. Master Michael O'Malley, a four-time U.S. team captain and senior instructor at the Institute, has been studying Taekwondo since he was 14. I was in high school at the time, and uh, I grew up in the inner city in Boston, in Dorchester. And uh, I'd come up, and this school, uh, coincidentally, had just opened. It had been open for a couple of months. I got a chance to see Grandmaster Kim for the first time, and I was fairly enamored by what he was teaching, even though the school was a lot smaller then. Master O'Malley says anyone can learn to enjoy and benefit from Taekwondo. My first love is teaching, so um, it's given me an opportunity to be able to teach and give back uh, what I've learned over the years from this particular school. Uh, we have people from all walks of life here, from kids five years old up to 85 years old. I recommend Taekwondo to people all the time. The Boston Symphony Orchestra has been one of the city's greatest cultural assets since its inaugural concert in 1881. have long embraced classical music for its beauty, complexity, and rich history. Winning a much-coveted spot at the BSO is no small feat, but three women of Korean background joined the ranks of the world's best after years of hard work and commitment. Elita Kong is assistant concert master for the Boston Symphony Orchestra and the Boston Pops. She joined the BSO 12 years ago. At our best, there are times that I sit in the section and I just I marvel at the depth of talent and musical ability that we have here. And you've got a hundred or so very, very talented people who somehow learn to play together and know how to listen to each other and are willing to make the necessary compromises and, you know, because what we're doing basically is a team sport. So you can't have any divas, you can't have people who, who don't want to play the game. And I think by and large we, we have a very cooperative group of very, very talented people. But a life in classical music hasn't been easy. Elita says that striving for artistic growth can sometimes be daunting. You know, there are times when you feel a little frustrated because you go through periods of rapid growth and then plateaus. It's kind of like dieting, right? So growth, plateau, growth, plateau, and then the plateaus are a little scary because you think, is this it? 
you know, I, you know, there's so much more to learn. There's so much more to so much more you can do to expand yourself as a musician. But if you hit one of those frustrating dead patches, it's a little scary. In 2006, at age 22, Julianne Lee joined the BSO's first violin section. Art is so important to people in Boston. Um, Born in Seoul, she studied her craft in the U.S., Korea, and France before coming to Boston for her master's degree in music. I love being here. <laughs> I love the people that I work with. We're sharing as a group. We're making music, and, and I think that, yeah, that, that's very important, and it makes me very happy. For Julianne, music has surpassed speech as a limitless form of expression. I love doing what I do because you don't need to be able to speak another language to communicate with the foreigner. With music, universally, you can, anywhere you go, you can connect. Elita feels equally close to her work. It's just become so completely woven into my identity that it's just, it's, it's like another organ, but, you know, intangible. Shian Sung is the BSO's first female assistant conductor and one of a few female conductors at any major symphony. Beethoven said music is the, the only the thing they uh, it can express everything. It's, um, it's more than art or more than uh, dance. Sung, a 34-year-old native of Busan, South Korea, began her studies as a pianist. I love to play piano and then become a, a good pianist. However, while studying in Berlin, Sung was inspired to set aside her first passion and enter the male-dominated world of conducting. For the 128th season of the BSO, conductor Sung showed Boston's classical music lovers her unique interpretation of time-honored music by Sibelius, Grieg, Copland, and Bartok. I want to give the audience some hope or some, you know, some special emotions. I think the classical music is a really good uh, method to touch the, the, the heart, you know, the, the people's heart. And the BSO heads to Tanglewood for their summer. Their 2009-2010 season begins on September 23rd. Up next, making a multi-part documentary about remembering the Korean War. Professor Ramsey Leem is a professor of psychology at Boston College, specializing in Asian American and Korean studies. He is a founding member of the Asian American Resource Workshop and the Boston Korea Friendship Association. He's here today to tell us about a traveling exhibition he recently directed, as well as an upcoming documentary he co-produced that deals with the psychological aftermath of the Korean War. Welcome, Dr. Leem, to City Line. Thank you. Um, tell us a little bit uh, more about the inspiration for this project that you've taken on? Both of these uh, pieces of work are related to an oral history project I did a number of years ago, uh, interviewing Korean Americans about their memories and legacies of the Korean War, which for most Americans is remembered really only as a 